Hello, everyone, and welcome to MSK Unknown Case Series number 59. Here we have a great case. We have a frontal view of the right shoulder in a young individual. And the question that I have for you is, what activity could predispose to the radiographic findings shown? Is it overhead throwing, weightlifting, skiing, or running? What activity could predispose to the radiographic findings shown? So here we obviously have, if you take a look at the distal clavicle, notice that it almost looks like a rat ate out a piece of the subchondral bone here. We have distal clavicular osteolysis or resorption of bone. And of course, this is seen in post-traumatic cases like that seen in weightlifting. So weightlifting is the best answer, particularly those who bench press and do heavy bench pressing. Overhead throwing is a risk factor for slap tears, superior labral, anterior, posterior labral tears in the shoulder. Skiing can be a risk factor for many things, but often ACL injuries uh, in the knee. And running, of course, is a major risk factor for stress fractures, but distal clavicular resorption is often seen in weightlifters. And what we see here is on the radiograph, we see, you know, loss of bone along the distal clavicle here, right? So it almost looked at a rat ate out a piece of the bone here. And if we turn to the MRI, we notice that there's bone marrow edema along the distal clavicle. There's a little bit of subperiosteal edema as well. And the bone looks a little ill-defined along the subchondral plate, right? So distal clavicular resorption. There is a differential diagnosis for distal clavicular resorption. Uh, Post-traumatic cases, as we just explained, common in bench pressers, uh, can often be bilateral, but it can be unilateral in contact sports, right? So any sort of trauma to that area can result in distal clavicular resorption. It can be post-surgical. There's a surgery known as a Mumford procedure, which resects the distal clavicle as a cure for subacromial impingement, patients that have uh, or predispose to rotator cuff tears because that space at the acromion interval is narrowed. We want to open up that space and decompress it. And we do that often with a Mumford procedure. Chronic rotator cuff tears can also result in chronic distal clavicular resorption because that acromial humeral space, that space between the humeral head and the acromion is now narrowed. You get a high riding humeral head that results in remodeling of the acromion and the clavicle. And that can result in osseous resorption and, you know, changes along the bone and thus distal clavicular resorption. Often older patients that have had rotator cuff tears for a very long time. Certain inflammatory arthropathies like rheumatoid arthritis can result in this because of the synovitis and panis that leads to resorption of bone, particularly along the distal clavicle. It can also resorb the acromion as well, but the key to the finding is looking at other parts of the body, like the hands and the feet and looking for marginal erosions, joint effusions and synovitis in other parts of the body. And of course, hyperparathyroidism, the primary form caused by a parathyroid adenoma or the secondary form caused by renal osteodystrophy can result in distal clavicular resorption. Often there will be osteoresorption in other parts of the body as well. So look for that. Uh, it can certainly be bilateral in the cases of hyperparathyroidism. So that's your differential for distal clavicular resorption when you see it. Always consider these entities when you see distal clavicular resorption. Thank you so much for your attention. Please subscribe to the MedED page, support our mission in passing on knowledge for free globally, and see you next week for another high-yield MSK unknown case.